have a board of experts that is from our conflict management team and ask them to introduce themselves and their occupation. Good morning, happy Sabbath, everyone. My name is Dr. Andre Taylor with a PhD in guidance counseling. Good morning, Sabbath School. Good morning. My name is Arlene Thomas. I'm a counselor. Good morning, Sabbath School. Good morning. My name is Professor Thomas. All right, Board of Experts. How do we go about resolving a personal conflict? There are three different ways to handle conflict. We can fight. Or we could run away. But the better way is to focus on the problem. Perhaps it will help us understand these choices if I describe a conflict situation and then have each of you illustrate your particular type of conflict con response. It is evening at the Jones's home. Ever and Steve have just finished supper. Ever, a teacher, has the laundry to do as well as report cards to finish before bedtime. Mm. Steve says, come go for a walk with me. Eva feeling frustration, instant frustration. She can't possibly do all these activities. How might she handle this conflict with her husband? How come you always wait until I have a million things to do before asking me to go for a walk? You're always interfering with my work. Hmm. Why couldn't you ask me this earlier? You are so inconsiderate and selfish. Sometimes I wonder why I marry you. Ignore it and feel like a martyr. Say, Sure, honey, whatever you say. Heather goes on the walk, but silently seeth, logs behind, and complain about how fast Steve walks. She stays up until 1 a.m. to finish all her work and goes to bed feeling prosecuted. Let's try this. The better way is to say, honey, you wanted me to go on a walk right now really frustrates me because I want to be with you. But I have to do laundry and finish my report cards. I don't see how I can do all that and go on a walk too. Focus is always the best response to conflict. It brings the conflict into the open. It expresses feelings, but does not blame. It allows the other person freedom to help resolve the conflict. In this case, Steve might withdraw his frustration, cause a request, or he might offer to do the laundry while Heather does the report cards so they can both go for a walk. Fight and flight messages only make conflict worse. Focus messages make room for a solution. Huh. Sound good. The story of Queen Esther beautifully illustrates these three ways to end the conflict. Ava decided to fight Mordecai. Oh. Hmm. The story of Queen Esther beautifully illustrates these three ways to end the conflict. Haman decided to fight Mordecai. 
He chose aggression to meet his difficult person in his life. He built a gallows on which he hung the man he hated. Haman's relationship with the king is an example of flight. When the king sent him to lead Mordecai through the streets, he meekly submitted to the king's wish, all the time hating what he had done to what hating what he had to do. This is a great example of focus. Esther used the focus method in her relationships. She confronted the king. She herself she said, King Exorcist, when you make a law to kill the Jews, I feel threatened because I'm also a Jew. Using the right technique solved is this problem. What about the conflict of Jacob and Esau? Do we see the same three choices at work? Indeed we do. Esau chose to fight. <laughs> Jacob, choose flight. My fellow colleagues, the problem wasn't solved until Jacob confronted Esau and they made a covenant together. They had to face each other before the problem could be solved. Huh. Let's try some modern conflicts. I'll give you two situations. The first one, in a concert, the people behind you keep talking in a fairly loud voice, distracting you from enjoying the concert. How might you resolve this conflict? Huh. Turn around and snarl at them. Do you have any respect for others? If you want to talk, why don't you leave? Get up and leave or find another place to sit. Smile and sweetly say, your talking disturbs me because I can't hear what's going on. Right. Or try this other conflict. Let's see. Let's look at this other situation. A school principal makes frequent announces, announcements over the loudspeaker system and interrupts your classroom unnecessarily. How might you handle conflict with your boss? What kind of jerk are you? sending messages over the speaker all the time of the day. Can you get organized enough to give them all at once? Or why wouldn't you photograph your stupid announcements? Say nothing. Ignore the problem and hope it will disappear. It won't. Focus. Say nothing. When you make frequent announcements over the loudspeaker, I feel frustrated because my lessons are interrupted and it's difficult to regain the student's attention. By now, it is plain that a focused message is better than a fight or a flight one, for it helps resolve the problem and lessen the conflict. At the same time, it let others know how you are feeling. It brings the problem out into the open. How do we go about giving a focus message? Hmm. What ingredients should it have? It should give a non-judgmental description of the behavior that is upsetting you. Don't blame or call names. Simply state the problem clearly and in an objective manner. Tell me the behavior makes you feel. Express your feelings. Give a clear statement of the concrete and tangible effect the behavior of the other person has on you. Oh, so should you tell what you want done about the problem? Should you offer the solution? No, that's a wrong thing to do. Give the other person freedom to do whatever he or she 
wishes about the problem. If the person does not accept your message, but begins to argue, get defensive, or resort to me in calling, what should you do? Okay. The important thing is to stay in control of the situation. Do not let it control you. Wait until the person winds down. Let him or her know you heard what he or she said. Then repeat your focus messages quietly. Keep focusing on the problem and restate in your feelings. Hmm. I believe this concept of taking control of a conflict instead of letting it control you is what Jesus was trying to teach us in the Sermon on the Mount. Huh. He told us to turn the other cheek, to go two miles instead of one, and to give more than is asked of us. How do you reconcile these commands with facing conflict and focusing on the problem? I believe Jesus was saying, don't fight when you come into conflict. He was telling us, don't meekly submit injustice. Don't run away from conflict. Flight is not the answer. Stand and face the person. Confront him or her with your need. Then control your own life. Take charge of the situation. That's exactly what you're doing when you say, okay, if you want me to go one mile, I'll make a decision and go two miles. Do you want my coat? I can do better than that. I'll give you my cloak also. The Christian way of dealing with interpersonal conflict is not fight, it's not flight. It is confrontation and focus. Hmm. These are some suggestions. Mighty ones. Thank you, board of experts, for helping us understand this vital principle of conflict management. Not only will learning how to manage, not only with learning how to manage conflict make us better workers, neighbors, spouses, and parents, but it will make us better witnesses to love, to the love of Jesus. Oh, how a clear witness of Christ's character is needed here at home as well as in the mission land. Sister Victoria Brown will share with us our Adventists are witnessing in the life of Poland. Good morning, Sabbath School. Good morning. Our mission report, our mission story this morning is coming from Poland and it's entitled A Walk in the Park. Ms. Dorota, she was only five years old. She lived with her grandfather, and they attended the Catholic Church every Sunday. But one Sunday, Dorita burst into tears. She said, oh, Grandpa, I don't feel God in this church. And her grandpa was so sad for her. He'd take her to a beautiful countryside field, 
I said, no, can you open your heart and your mind and speak to God openly and sincerely, sincerely, sorry, and he will hear you. She was very happy because from that time on, she really hear God. But after her grandfather died, some years later, she started to find it real hard, not fitting in the community. Many people didn't understand her relationship with God. And then she had a health problem since she was 17 years old. But Dorothy was very faithful. She kept praying, praying every day. Eventually she got married and she had children. Unfortunately, her health started to deteriorate. But she still prayed fervently. People tell, told her that, oh, you pray too much. If God still, God still exists, he wouldn't allow you to suffer so much. But Dorota, she still keep praying and believe that she would get help through this. She decided to travel to Northern Ireland where she urged where she might find help with her health problem. Arriving in Belfast, she learned that she didn't have the disease she had, she had originally been diagnosed because she was praying so much. God has healed her. She was feeling much better and decided to settle in the town of Cardiff, just miles away, at the park. Dorita enjoyed the park in Cardiff, and sometimes she went with her grown daughter. But as she was walking in the park, there was the lady with a cell phone, and she heard her speaking Polish language, and she was so delighted because there's no one else speaking that language. And they began to introduce themselves. And eventually the conversation turned to be religion. And the lady, her name is Barbara. She was the one that had the cell phone. And she explained to them that she was a Seventh-day Adventist. Barbara invited them to Bible study. Dorota was very delighted in addition to the Bible study, um, Barbara introduced them to the internet broadcast of Oak Channel in Poland, and in, including the popular Oak Sabbath School program. And it was translated in Polish, so that was very good for her. But there was a lot of emotion. Dorita was very happy to attend the Seventh-day Adventist Church regularly. I always want to be baptized and through Barbara, that same lady with the cell phone, she learned that she could baptize as an adult rather than an infant. Because at the Catholic Church, they baptize infant. But she learned that she could baptize as an adult. Soon, Dorota made plans to be baptized and wanted this special service to take place in her homeland. So she wanted to travel back to Poland for a baptism. But Dorota had one regret. She wanted her children to be there at her baptism to witness her ceremony. But unfortunately, they couldn't be there. But one good thing, they were able to watch her an old channel, live broadcast over the internet, and they were watching her live. And she was very happy for that. Now, Dorita did not forget her, her non-Adventist friends in Poland. She, arrived, she invites them to watch the Oak Sabbath School and Oak, Oak Channel in Poland, and then Skype them and discuss ideas presented on the program. She's, she's saying that I'm very grateful for the illness that it forced her to come to Ireland. I could really get to know God. And thanks to this, I got to know Seventh-day Adventists. Yeah. And now I feel strange. I'm not, I don't feel strange anymore with not fitting, not belonging. I feel like I've come home. Amen. And this is a great plan. Dorita is delighted that a portion of the 13th Sabbath offering 
will go towards the building of a new studio for the Oak Channel in Poland. Currently, the staff work is very small here in Poland, Un Union Conference Building in Warsaw. This is a great plan because a new studio is much needed. She says that people do a great work and they need more comfortable space and equipment to prepare professional programs. In the meanwhile, Oak Channel, Poland, continues to stream programs over the internet. I am thankful that I can watch Oak Sabbath School and other programs in my language, Lorita said. This is a great help to many Poles who live abroad. And my daughter and I hope to attend camp meeting in Poland. She continues, but the tickets are so expensive. So what they did was watching Oak Channel on the internet. So our 13th Sabbath offering this week will go to the building of the new studio so other men and women can learn about the love of Jesus. Amen.